All right, dear friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Salon's Vlog, and it's a beautiful Friday morning here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, to be precise. Wherever you are around the globe, dear friends, you are highly, highly welcome. Beautiful Friday indeed. Thank God it's Friday, wherever you are. Yes, yes, it is Friday. Most of you, I know you are excited because you have wonderful plans. You have a lot of plans for the weekend. Well, I am under the weather. Forgive me for my voice. But we will do our best to deliver to you quickly. Let me give some shout out. Some shout out to some of you guys out there yesterday because we were so busy. We could not give shout out as expected. But right now, I want to give some shout out to a few friends out there. Then, get to the end of the video, I'll bring more of the shout outs, dear friends. Um, it's a good afternoon in Celerion. My name is Mr. Taylor. Thank you so much. To you bro for giving us update from chelsea my team no my my team is going to do a good job this summer well that is coming from mr taylor celerio taylor from celerio all right this is a good afternoon sir i'm not happy with chelsea performance they played nothing in the second half yes the second half was actually not the best first half was quite better than the second half Dear friend, all right, and this was coming from Christopher. Christopher, please let us know where you are watching us from. You're on the Africa continent, you're in Europe, you're in America. Let's know, yes, your exact location. Let us know your country and your name. All right, this is coming from Johannes. He said, What about Madweke? Tell me, you are killing the team, Salons, watching every player, not only the players you don't like. <laughs> Well, well, my dear friend, you see, Madweke yesterday, in that, first, in that first half, he was in the game, but he wasted a lot of chances, you know that. Yeah, in my own opinion, he wasted a lot of chances. Madweke could pass certain balls, you know, to someone who is already in the box to shoot. So he's been, sometimes he's like, more like a selfish play. That is the problem how we think. His, his take ons are very good. He, the speed of Madweke yesterday was great. But the final point where he has to pass the ball, he feels like he wants to shoot by himself. He wants to strike by himself. That is the only challenge I have with Madweke, honestly. All right? So I, I took, I, in fact, it is a very good observation you made. It's not as if I'm against any player, actually. Oh, I don't like certain players. No, 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 no. Madweke is a very good player. He is very good. But his final, you know, delivery is where I have a challenge. All right? Then this was, okay, also from Juan. He said, you cannot win with Madweke, Nkuku, Lavia, Ogochuku, Chuku, Emeka, Badashelli. Oh, you have ruled out all of them. Even Nkuku. <laughs> and Lavia, my dear friend. Well, 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 well. That is your opinion. All right. A very good morning to you, wherever you are. On the continent of Africa, in Europe, in America, here in Asia with me, dear friends, you are highly, highly welcome. Or wherever you are around the globe, I am excited to be here this morning, Friday morning. Let's get started into our main issues for the day. Look, it is a beautiful day. Yesterday in that game, we all watched it. Now, I'm starting from our goalkeeping department. I saw something unique yesterday in that goalkeeper, uh, Sanchez, when Sanchez was, was in the goal post. For the first time, I watched our, goalkeeper, our goalkeeper's performance. And personally, I was somehow pleased with the whole approach. If you go back and you watch the replay, especially in that first half, you could see Sanchez was never in a goal post. He never sat back in a goal post. He was always outside the line. As a matter of fact, sometimes he moves even above the 18-yard box. Meaning, he's giving the defenders the, 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 the support that is needed. Remember, we played back three. And that back three with, with Sanchez out from the goalpost, that is what the coach has been talking about. Ball-playing goalkeeper. It is actually risky. Yes. It is very risky. Because any mistake from your midfielders, your opponent could easily get that ball and before he realizes it, it, it is a goal. 
But for me, it, personally, it was a beautiful scene to watch our goalkeeper stepping forward. Though, I believe that Sanchez is not the best for that, for that style of play. It's not. I, I still prefer Petrovic. I still prefer Petrovic to Sanchez in our goalpost. Dear friends, but then, right now as we speak, Chelsea are negotiating for Jurgensen. Jurgensen, yes. The, the, the Swedish goalkeeper. Chelsea negotiations for Jurgensen are advancing well. The club are working to close the deal. Small gap in valuation, according to Fabrizio Romano. Meaning, the goalkeeper that we spoke about three days ago, Chelsea are work, working right now to get that deal done, to get that goalkeeper in. If that is the case, well, we also got in the news, we also got another news also from another source that indicates that Chelsea are going for Real Madrid goalkeepers looning. And it's going to be like a player plus cash for looning. And that player is going to be our goalkeeper, Kepa, who is just returning from a loan from the same Real Madrid. So we're going to be adding cash on top of Kepa for Lunin. So it's between now Lunin and Jurgensen. Personally, if you ask me, I would prefer we go in for Jurgensen. I mean, the guy is a, he's another monkey in the air. Very good. Very, very good. I would prefer Jurgensen, the Swedish goalkeeper, than Lunin from Real Madrid. That is my personal take. That is my personal take. But let me ask you, dear friends, between Petrovic and Sanchez, which one of these two do you think Chelsea should let go? Because if we are getting Lunin or we are getting Jurgensen in the squad, meaning one of the two have to go. We are being told Pet uh, Petrovic is having injury problem. That is why he was left behind. Hopefully this weekend, be between now and Monday, Petrovic will be joining the squad in the US. Now, between Petrovic and Sanchez, which of these two do you think Chelsea should let go? Let me hear from you in the comment section. Because it is very clear, evidently clear, that either Real Madrid, Lunin, or Jurgensen are coming to Chelsea this window. Dear friends, all right then. We move on from the goalkeeper. And before I continue, just look at this on your screen. Man City 3, Celtic 4. <laughs> Liverpool 0, Princeton 1. Rosenberg 1, Manchester United 0. <laughs> look, Chelsea 2. Rest Ham 2. It looks like the first game of all, most of the teams, they are all losing. Only Chelsea play a draw game. After all, we are better off. What, what do you think? Chelsea fans, don't you think we are still better off than the so-called big teams that are ahead of us? Man City 3, Celtic 4. You can, you can call it a preseason game, so it doesn't matter. Hey, it matters a lot. When you talk about confidence building, it matters a lot. Yes. Well, just by the way. All right. Today, this entire squad is moving away from, uh, moving to another state in anticipation or in preparation towards tomorrow's game. Yes. Chelsea players are moving to another state where the, the next game will be played. And I'm trying to get that for you. But before we go to that, friends, Key point from the final Chelsea training session yesterday. When I won the training session yesterday, there are a few things I noticed from the training. You know, one would have expected that the players or the team will rest after the game on Wednesday night. But no, 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 no. Mareska is not into rest. Last night, there, were, there was a training. And today, the, the, the players will be flying out to another state. Few things that I observed. Ben Chiwa trained with the wingers. Ben Chiwa, he trained with the wingers. 
Rhys James invented a lot and trained with the midfielders. Yeah. Rhys James, he trained with the midfielders last yesterday, our last training before the team, you know. Rhys James trained with the midfielders. I'm pointing out these few things so that we know exactly what to expect in our coming games. Means that Rhys James is going to be inventing a lot in, a, in, in the upcoming games. Ben Chiwell, he trained with the wingers. And don't forget, Chiwell is a defender. He is a left back. I trained with the wingers. So what are we to expect? Next. Now, Moidrick, Madweke and Gwe, they look very sharp in training. Makayo Moidrick, Madweke and Gwe, they look very, very, very sharp. Yes. From my observation in the training last night, are we going to be seeing a different formation, different style of play in our next game? It is possible. <laughs> uh, well, you see, to be very honest with you, our first game, my tactical thoughts, my tactical thoughts on that first game, and going to the second game, I would like to analyze the whole game, first and second half, very well, critically. Then when we are going to go into the next game, we know exactly what to expect. Because, dear friends, Chelsea now is going to have an identity. We could see clearly what Mareska was trying to do. I could see from the very first half, especially, I, 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 I could identify with the players and the positions they are playing, what Mareska want to achieve. Now, quickly, tactical thoughts of Chelsea versus Wrexham game. Rejects inverting into midfield with Lavia as the deepest midfielder in the pivot. Yeah. Rejects inverting into midfield with Lavia as the deepest midfielder in a pivotal, in, in, in a pivotal way. Now, in that sense, we're able to hold or retain, we're able to retain ball. The game, you can see clearly that we, we, we had much, of, much more of the ball in that area because Rhys James and Lavian have become like a pivot. So, peak ball retention, peak ball resistance, we had a combined technique and physique in that area. We were present in the midfield, our presence was felt in the midfield. We were able to dominate the midfield. Now, that brings to mind if we have Rhys James inverting and combining with Romeo Lavia as a pivot in the midfield, what if Enzo retains? What happens? Casado and Enzo. Casado and Enzo could play double eight. That is what I foresee. If Enzo should return and we want to make use of him, Casado and Enzo could play the double eight. If inverting right back, Lavia, Casado, or Enzo can play deep. <laughs> I don't know whether you, have, you are getting it right. If we are inverting, the left, the right back, then that would mean that Lavia, Casado, or Enzo means that either one of them could play that, you know, could, could play deep. Preferably, preferably, if Lavia is fit, then we could have Enzo as an option. Means that Enzo will have to find a space on the bench for a while. If Lavia is fit, then Enzo will be an option. Casado could be the second eight. That is my personal take. Because right now, looking at the midfield we have, dear friend, 
And the style of play, the tactics we want to play, inverting right back, will be stuck with Enzo, Casado, uh, Dewsbury, Romeo Lavia. All these four, plus the inverted right back we're going to be having, our midfield will be stuck. And the tactics, or the tactical way that we could manage these players to fit into the system very clearly, Casado and Enzo should be the double eight. Then we can have Romeo Lavia having the pivot with our inverted right back. That is all I try to say. Now you got my point very clearly. <laughs> Dear friends, well, it is your breakfast, Friday morning breakfast, and I would not like to take much of your time. But you see, Mareska was asked a question. He was asked a question. Mareska was asked a question that the style of play, possessing the ball, and as we are doing right now, we could concede a lot of goals. Dear friends, we could concede a lot of goals. Mareska was asked if he was worried about conceding too many goals from build-up play. And this is what he said. He said, hopefully, not too many. It is one of the risks that you have to try, that you have trying to build from behind. He said, it is one of the risks that you have trying to build from behind. I have no doubt. I think you are going to concede or we are going to concede in different ways. So you need to decide in which way you need to concede a goal. Sometimes teams that try to build from the back concede goals. But, but I think you are going to score more than you concede. For sure, we did many things we can improve. But we started just two weeks ago. Tonight was important to start seeing the identity of the team. And the identity is there. Dear friends, all he's trying to say is that yes, do a play from behind. Most at times, your team will concede goals. But you equally score more goals if you play well. And he also stated, no matter how you want to build up, no matter how, teams will always concede goals. <laughs> he admitted, it is an admission. Teams will always concede goals, but how you concede a goal is what matters. And how you prevent, you know, goals, too many goals, is also another thing. How you prevent, you, you, might, you may concede goals, but how many goals you concede in a game also matters a lot. Well, I leave that for your judgment, dear friends. And let me leave you here. It looks like your breakfast, my breakfast is ready and it's hot. Let us not waste much time on this. I should be back with more exclusives and explosives later in the day. Dear friends, quickly, before I let you go, big shout out. Yes, big shout out to... Ah, let me see, let me see. Who do I have here to give a big shout out to? Uh, my first year. Okay, Victor is an ideal target only if his pride over coaches can be checked. No name. There's no need, but he says that Victor Osimhen is an ideal target for Chelsea if only his pride over coaches can be checked. Please remember to give us your name next time. All right, big shout out to you out there anyway. This one says Magwe is our new coaster, very energetic player. Yes, Magwe is a very energetic player, and it's coming from who? You also have not given your name. Please give us your name and where you are watching us from. So Mareska should stop inverting James and Gusto into the midfield. Because it doesn't work out at all. Coming from Chris Williams. Chris Williams. That is his opinion. Big shout out to you out there, my dear friend Chris Williams, wherever you are. Enjoy your weekend. Yes. Chris Williams again says, See, but they're Shelly, Broja, Sterling, Madrake, Sanchez, and Ugochuku should be sold. George, Angelo, and Gwe are great. Well, 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 well. That is your opinion. We will see. But they're Shelly, Broja, Sterling, I agree with you. Madrake, I'm not sure. I think we need to keep Madreke. Yes, we need to keep Madreke. We need to keep Madreke. And uh, Ugo Chuku as well. Ugo Chuku as well. All right, dear friends, 
Gwe is even better than Broa. Angelo, George, and Gwe are great ballers. That is true. Coming from Prince Williams. All right. Okay. Let me let you guys go. I will be back with more exclusives in the hours to come, dear friends. I'll see you when you see me. Shalom and peace.